Okay, so <laughs> it's good. It's good talking to you. I know we haven't met, um, but I followed your um, I followed you on social media, and it was so real that to me, I thought you were probably one of the MPs from Manitoba, um, because of how long I follow your stuff and um, how well you post things. I it was actually the the night I reached out to you that I check. I'm like, wait, you're not actually from Manitoba. I was like, wow. That's that's so um so surprising and to that's talk about the, the power of social media, right? Um, mm -hmm. although we are not close, we haven't met before, we are so much interacting with um one another, even to the level of me reaching out to you for uh, an interview like this. And you <laughs> you just amaze me and then you just respond, oh that oh send me the send me an email and then when I send the email, um yeah. it up. So yeah. Well, you know, we're, we're in a, such a time where um, a lot of the traditional barriers uh, no longer exist and uh, we can connect with people all around the world so very quickly and easily. Yeah. Uh, and um, of course, there are some downsides to that, but uh, mostly, I think, with, uh, with people that uh, have good intentions, it's a, it's a very, very positive thing. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I get lots of requests. My attitude... Um, has been recently that what, you know, if people, people come up to me wanting to be on their podcasts or, um, want me to be interviewed, uh, for their programs, I, I almost invariably say yes. Uh, you know, I myself have a podcast. I'm always looking for guests. So I, I, and I have a, a television show, uh, uh, business, uh, and economics, uh, television show. So I'm always looking for guests there. It's always, you're always trying to find content. So um, I, I don't want to be uh, the kind of person that is always looking for guests for me, but then turns down other people. So I'm uh, I'm very happy to be on your show as well. Yeah, thanks so much. <laughs> okay, so um, for today, the, there'll be I'll be asking you just about a couple of questions, but you feel free to discuss more and then talk about more. And the first one I'll talk about the introduction, uh, which would be like, who are you? Sure. So my name is Tony Clement, um, and uh, I was for 25 years a politician in Ontario and in Canada. I was a member of provincial parliament uh, from 1995 to 2003, and then I was a member of the, of the national parliament from 2006 to 2019. Uh, in those positions, I, had, I held ministerial rank. Uh, so in um, in Ontario, I was Minister of Transportation, Minister of uh, Municipal Affairs and Housing, Minister of the Environment, and Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. I happened to be the health minister when the SARS outbreak, the SARS pandemic hit uh, uh, in 2003. Then in, in uh, the federal uh, politics, I was Minister of Health for two years, then Minister of Industry, and then President of the Treasury Board, which is kind of like the Chief Operating Officer uh, if the Minister of Finance is the CFO, I was the kind of the chief operating officer of the government. So I held those positions uh, and had a stint in opposition. Uh, and now um, I am a startup entrepreneur. I have a number of business startups, uh, some in the healthcare space, some in the tech space that I'm involved in. Uh, and um, I also have this, um, uh, this media Activity. So I have my own podcast called And Another Thing Podcast that I do with another gentleman by the name of Jody Jenkins. And then I'm part of a startup new news network called the News Forum, which is currently on Bell and it's available on the newsforum.ca. And I host my own show called Boom and Bust, which is uh, primarily focused on business news and views and economics, uh, economic public policy, that kind of thing. So yeah, a lot going on, uh, even with COVID, and uh, I'm enjoying it. Wow, wow, that's 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 a massive profile. Yeah, I was I was just checking your profile up there. I was like, wait, is this the person I was talking with? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a really a really awesome career. Um, an awesome career both in politics and also in business. So that's that's really good. Thanks for sharing that with me. And that will take me to my next question: Is how did you start your um, political career? Yeah, um, good question. A lot of people do ask it from time to time. Uh, I started as a volunteer, as an activist in the uh, Progressive Conservative Party of Ontario and then in Canada. 
And uh, I kind of started in, in high school and in university and uh, took positions of authority that were relevant to my age. So I was head of my campus club and that kind of thing and kind of moved up the ranks. Uh, when I started my professional career as a lawyer, um, I also was president of the Ontario PC party uh, and then went uh, inside uh, the Ontario legislature as an aide to Mike Harris, who at the time was leader of the third party. He wasn't even leader of the opposition. He was leader of the third party, but eventually became premier. And when he ran to become premier, I also ran for a seat in Brampton, Ontario, Brampton South, and won in 1995. And that started my political career. So to me, it was a kind of a step-by-step -step trajectory. Having said that, I never had like, um, it's not as if I had a plan, like in five years, I'm gonna be doing this or in eight years, I'm gonna be doing that. I, to me, uh, it was uh, the opportunity existed. I felt passionate about the issues. Uh, I felt in, in both federal and provincial cases that, that, that there were sitting governments that I thought need to be changed. Uh, and so I was kind of part of the insurgency to change those governments. Uh, and so uh, to me, it was, uh, it was uh, something that I wanted to do with part of my life. I knew it was never going to be forever. Ne it, it never is. Uh, mm -hmm. But I felt uh, I could make a difference for uh, part of my life before going back to business. Wow, that's that's amazing that um, you start serving both from um, the level you find yourself. So that was in school, and then you start moving up the career. That's that's very important even to to us, to as younger ones, that we should start looking for opportunity to serve in any capacity that we can find ourselves. And your story is, is an example of what can happen when somebody starts serving from any capacity they find themselves. So thank you so much. Um, for sharing that today. Let me awesome. say that. Let me add to that because that's a very good point because people come to me and they say, you know, I want to get involved in politics. I want to be a strategist. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't just go in. A strategist is not an entry-level position, okay? Mm -hmm. You've got to show your worth over time. Uh, and look, there are people, there are many different ways to get involved, but my way was to start at the grassroots level, at the local level, get involved in elections, get involved in campaigns, understand the nuts and bolts of, of politics, and then move up the ranks. Other people, quite frankly, they're, they're, that's not the only path. Some people have a long uh, and successful career uh, in life, uh, it might be in business, might be uh, as an educator, might be as, a, a, as an activist, uh, you know, or a philanthropist do those things first, and then after great success that way, get involved in politics. So I'm not saying my path is the only path, but it was the path that I chose, uh, but there might be another path that makes more sense for other people. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good thing. Thank you for sharing that. And it's also good, brings another point to me that um, there could be different paths for different people going to get into the same destination, um, so we need to know uh, what paths um, do you want to follow and to diligently serve in any opportunity that you find yourself, whether in, in the business, for example, you talk about uh, people that you know, started in the business uh, and then eventually go into politics, right? But also anything you're doing, any path you're following, make sure you're serving diligently and representing the, the people that you're serving in those capacities. So. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. I think it's important to have a life. Like if you're going to be in politics, I, I, I had a business career before I got involved in politics mm -hmm. uh, and a legal career. So I th think that is important to have some real life experience. Mm -hmm. uh, other, other people might have other ex experiences, uh, uh, community organizing or whatever it is. But I, I think that is important rather than, and there are some people who do this and they're very successful. But for me, it's important to have some experience outside of, the legislature or the parliament when, you, when you're standing to be representing people because you want to be empathetic to their ups and downs in life. They want to, you want to be able to have some experience that you can give as a parliamentarian uh, when you're debating issues or debating bills or helping people in your constituency. I think that's really important. That's, that's also a key, key point too. Um, experience matters and it's, it's important that we we serve in any capacity that we can. We gather experiences from either, but especially this um, 
community now we have opportunities even to volunteer in different areas. so those are also learning experiences for for us that don't just but if you don't if you don't have your business set up right now you can start by volunteering um, or um, serving in other communities in that way you're also getting the experiences so that's that's just a very good point thank you for sharing that um, my next question will be um, what keeps you going despite the challenges I know you talk about um, you being fully involved during the stars as outbreak um, and I know that will be a very um, challenging time too and even now in the pandemic people are also reaching out to you because they know that you have valuable experience doing um, times like that so what keeps you going despite the challenges and trials that comes with policies and yeah uh, I, I think that's an important question I, you know uh, I think that um, one of the things is is having the ability to do something that is greater than just yourself uh, you know you as an individual your needs your wants uh, obviously we all have to pay the rent uh, I'm not, uh, and, and I'm not dim diminishing that, but for me, uh, and hopefully most people get this, uh, what can I do that's bigger than myself? Can I serve my community? Can I serve uh, other families that need help? Can I uh, serve the, uh, the, the political debate that is going on or the social debate that is going on? Uh, I think those are important things. And, um, I came to my my faith uh, later 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 on in life, but uh, you know, as a Christian, uh, you know, we are taught to serve. Uh, you know, the leader servant is a big philosophical point of Jesus' teachings. Uh, that to be a great leader, you have to serve, uh, which was you know antithetical to the the times in which he lived on Earth. Um, that that did not compute with most Romans, let's put it that way. Uh, the, the purpose of being a leader in Roman society was to grab more goods and services for your own ends. So, but now we're taught, and I, I think it's a good lesson that if the greatest leaders are the greatest servants. So I, I think that it has to be part of our lives um, and it has to be part of our motivation uh, if, we, if we want to do some good. That's, that's really good, the importance of um, being a servant is the importance of um, the key role of your faith or your understanding that as a leader, you're not just there for yourself, you're there for something greater than you. You're not just there to serve yourself. I mean, like you talk about the rent is a person, right? But knowing that there's something greater than you that you're there to serve. So that is, um, like you shared, what, what keeps you going during the challenges. And so that's, that's a very good one. Um, thanks for sharing that. Um, so my, my, next go, my next question will be, um, what, what to be your next um, goal or aim um, at this? I know you, the, I think you, you're done with your car political career, if I, if I get it right. Say uh, that again. The... So what, what's your next goal or ambition? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, as I say, I, I've I now um, transitioned to uh, a business life uh, as well as um, uh, a media life, uh, life in media. And um, so I want to do some good there. So for instance, for as an example, in my business life, as I mentioned that uh, I'm involved in a couple of health startups. Uh, and so obviously, in, in this time of COVID, uh, the need for appropriate and proper health care solutions uh, is has never been greater. And so one of the startups I'm involved with, Matri Health Technologies, it's called out of Vancouver, uh, you know, is, is designed to give local solutions in Canada here uh, that uh, use, uses supply chains, uh, logistics, and technology to deliver better healthcare. So I think that's, again, that's something that I can see that has a larger than just me goal. Obviously, we want it to be profitable. We want it to be successful. It's a startup. We want to scale up, but uh, it, it has a better impact on society than that. Another uh, project that I'm working on involves a First Nations community in Canada, an Indigenous community, and uh, delivering better health care to, to that Indigenous territory and maybe other uh, Indigenous communities as well. Again, um, we want it to be successful but we also want it to have a, a positive health impact 
on indigenous communities. So uh, I'm looking for things that will be successful in the marketplace because otherwise, why would you spend the time and money to, to invest in a, and, and work in a startup? But it, it has to have a higher goal. It has to have a, a value added for society is what I'm looking for. My media profile, similarly, it, it gives me a perch to, uh, to be involved, to continue to be involved outside of parliament on the issues of the day. So uh, for example, on my boom and bust show, I've had former Prime Minister Mulroney on as a guest. Just uh, this week, I had uh, the uh, Finance Minister of Manitoba on the program. I've had former, I've had also Finance Ministers from Ontario, PEI, and Alberta on the program. I had an expert on cybersecurity on the program. I had a panel discussion on mining, another panel discussion on the skilled trades, talk about the future of the skilled trades in Canada. So it just gives me an opportunity to engage in the discussion, the discussions, plural, that are important for our society. And um, so that's what I like about it. That's, that's a lot. You have, you have a lot on your plate and, and your, your, your ability to combine all of them is something that is quite remarkable for me too. Um, I see you're not just involved in the business partner, you're in the media, you're in, in some way in the healthcare um, sector, and you also um, in, in you have the podcast and everything. So that that is quite um, impressive to me. That's also very um, inspiring to me to learn about all the different things that you're doing, and you're doing them um, excellently. And even with all that, you still um, take some time even to um, join me on this on this. Um, I call it maybe let's call it this episode of um sure. with Chris now. So thank you so much, Tony, um, um for having time to meet with me. Um do you have any last thought or comments or remarks? Well, I just for your uh, viewers, uh, I, I of course I hope everybody's staying healthy and safe uh, in this uh, crazy time that we're in. Uh, but uh, it's also an opportunity to keep following your dreams and uh uh, give back to society. So I just encourage people to find the way, even in this um, turbulent world in which we find ourselves, find a way to be impactful. I think that's really uh, why we've been put on earth. So uh, I encourage people to continue to look for that. All right. Thank you very much, Honorable Tony. For sure. I can see we'll talk about, we'll talk, maybe we'll get to talk sometime later. <laughs> yeah, I love that. For sure. No problem. Best, best of luck with your, with your programming. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.